How you guys doing today? My name is Colin Osborne and welcome to Technology at Work. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to automate your small business. I'm going to be showing you roughly six steps that you can use to automate and make your life a lot easier. These things are going to be very, very cool to use because it's going to help you put more time back into your business while you're not having to chase um, all of the leads. You're going to have your business working for you with different artificial intelligent technology systems that in my opinion are just easy to copy and paste and use and i'm going to be able to show you guys exactly how to do that in a step-by-step -step method um, in this video so stay tuned to the end of the video and i'm going to be also providing you guys with a snapshot to show you exactly how these things are done so make sure you guys stay tuned to the end of the video also like like comment and subscribe really would appreciate that if you really like the video and are very informative. Anyways, let's hop into the video, into the computer, excuse me, and we will get started. All right, let's hop into it. Make sure you guys, uh, if you haven't already, go to colinosborne.com and check out the resources page, as well as if you click on YouTube here, it'll take you directly to my YouTube channel and auto subscribe as well. Also make sure to Follow my Instagram. I post a lot of drone content and I'm going to be getting ready to post some more. I'm going on a couple trips soon. So I really want to get some cool stuff and shots out there. Anyways, 10 automations or I'm not going to say 10, but I believe there's a bunch more, but I'm going to give you six for right now um, that I believe are very useful for your business. Um, first things first, if you, I have a blog article that you can also read on how to automate your small business if you go to blogs then click on 10 automations right here you'll be able to see some of the different automations that i've talked about that i'm going to talk about as well today but also just some that i think are also vital but in my opinion six are autoresponder for contact form it's very essential a lot of times i know a lot of business owners if you go and submit a form they don't even know where it goes. Then you ask them, hey, have you ever done any online marketing? They talk about, oh, well, I've done it, but it just doesn't work. And then the reason why is because you just have all these leads coming in and you don't even know where your customers are coming from. So main thing to do is, is have an autoresponder as well as a, um, a way of managing where that client is. If he submits an intake form because he's interested, then it's probably going to be good to have some way of organizing that and that brings me to my second point is having a pipeline management or some sort of crm system so that when someone submits a form it also gets <clears throat> excuse me it also populates within the system so what i'm going to do real quickly is show you an example of what that looks like in a dummy account that i created all right so here you have a contact form and I'm going to ask you guys to contact me because it's technically just a fake um, form. I have been like, I just for this purpose, I, um, I'm setting it up for you. But with this form, um, you would be able to deploy it on your website. And then a customer comes on and is like, oh, I'm interested in, you know, submitting information to your, um, to your business. So to submit that form, and then there would then be an autoresponder within the workflow section, which I'm going to show you next. Um, and that would send a message uh, to that client who submitted the form saying, hey, we see that you got your information. We see that we'd receive your information. We'll get back to you at, at, you know, at a latest convenience. So that's a really nice part about that. So I'm going to hop over to the system. So if you see right here, you can see all the different inquiries that um, come out for a specific lead. And that's just people who submit into the form or whether it's a chat widget, which can be deployed on from this particular um, database. Um, and those are and really and truly, I look at the interested section or inquiry as like the main form of contact, the first form of contact. So that would obviously go in the first pipeline stage and then different opportunity or pipeline stages that you can look at would be onboarding and then product bought or sold or you know contract signed and that's actually moving on to my next 
automation, which would be automatic contract ascending. Uh, so there's different ways you can do that within the system. There's a way where you can build out a form so, sort of just like this, and you'd be able to have a signature at the bottom. And you could essentially use that as a contract. It doesn't necessarily look super pretty unless you had someone go in and code it, but um, it is kind of nice. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, let me go to sites. So just for argument's sake, let's go to the contact section. And you're gonna have to go to custom field, add a custom field, and then you click signature here. Signature. So say you're a lawyer or some sort of service-based business where you need someone to sign a contract and then also possibly submit payment, you could do that through this particular section and have it where it is all organized within the database. So that's also a nice part about that. And then that could also be managed within the CRM when you, let me just unsave that because it doesn't matter. That could be added into the CRM within the database. Let's just go to Henry Gross for a second. I hope he doesn't have any. Yeah. Okay, change that information there because I don't want you to see that. I'll just block that out. Um, but if they had signed a contract, you'd be able to see that information in here with the actual um, database information. Another part about that is being able to track where all of where your customers are going within the site. Uh, building this Italian website out, we added a wedding section to it and they wanted to rank for their wedding venue. So I was tasked with ranking the website on page one for wedding venues in Charlotte, North Carolina, wedding venues in Matthew, North Carolina, also ranking them on Google Maps. And I'm also going to be showing you guys an easy way to do that, as well as making sure that your NAP or name, address, phone numbers is correct at the bottom so that it uniformly matches with Google. So Google ranks your website up. Um, so we talked about autoresponder for contact form and you would honestly be able to do that in the automation section. Let me just go here. Let me see if there's one created for you guys. Okay. So with the contact form, submission notification we have it so that when someone submits the form um this and, and this section right here is called workflows so think of workflows as like your automational toolkit or your um you know i like to be kind of medieval so i call it my uh my weapons kit because i talk about weaponizing your marketing whenever i'm communicating with business owners. That's really honestly what it's all about. Being able to automate, weaponize your marketing so that you can give more time back to yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're running a business, not to necessarily just work like a dog. You know, you want to work being in a business, you know, there's, there's supposed to be some luxury to that. And I think that's the beautiful part about automation and technology is you don't have to have a very heavy um, or high, uh, sort of for it. Um, operating expense and still produce large amounts of profits. So what we're going to also do is, is we're going to click on this plus button and do a send email because what I want to also have is when a customer and I'm clicking on these codes, these autofill. So that's another nice part about this system is that you're able to essentially autofill a email which is connected from we use mailgun to integrate all of our systems and, and twilio for for text 
but for, for phone and, and email text. And we're able to use these codes to essentially autofill the name. So if someone submitted a form as Colin Osborne, and then, you know, my email, it would be Colin at ColinOsborne.com and phone numbers, whatever. I'm not going to give you guys a phone number out, but um, you would be able to put that information easily within the um, automation and be able to have a, let's just say, let's put for this automation uh, contact name. Thank you for submitting. Let's do thank you for submitting. What it's going to do is if John Jacob Jones or whatever his name is decides to send a, a message or it's a contact form, this information is going to be autofilled. So I'll do hey, that's some value again, first name. Thank you for submitting a contact form. Submission. Thank you for submitting our contact form. Please wait 24 hours. Let's see, please allow us 24 hours. Have a pizza day. And just a little bit about custom values, depending on what you're doing. Like I have an appointment reminder campaign, which is another automation. I'll show you guys what that looks like. But essentially when someone um, books a call on my calendar for a consultation, I don't have to continuously remind them, hey, just make sure that you show up to the call at two next week. It's already doing it for me. You usually would have to have a secretary do that, but I have a 24, a four and a two hour reminder that goes out that also provides them with the ability to reschedule or cancel, which is nice because then I don't have to do it. It just saves you a ton of work of being like, oh, well, let me go on my calendar. Your calendar can be, can be created exactly how you want it. And then they can go in and do everything they need to do to get a hold of you that way. And if you're that busy, if you're that type of, 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 of goaded is what I call it. <laughs> but anyway, so we have that. Just remember to put auto responder. All right. Now we're going to hop over to the missed call text back. Cause it's pretty important. All right, so to get to the missed call text back, we're gonna to go to settings. And then you're gonna, you're gonna be in business info. You scroll down to the bottom and you're gonna see this little feature called enable missed call text back. So the first thing is you're gonna to need to have a Twilio number or, in a, or actually High Level now has it where they have their own phone system, lead connector phone system, which is cheaper than Twilio. So. I actually recommend just going with one of those platforms. It's actually a lot better. But um, once you've integrated that, it's literally a, a, a click of a button. I think, I don't know if, if I've switched them onto it yet. It's still on Twilio right now, but I'll eventually switch them over to, um, to, uh, to uh, the connector. So you click this button. Hi, this is, and we just put Mario's because we don't need to, and location name would be if like you have a bunch of locations and you kind of want to have an autofill. That's the only way I'll, we'll just do, hi, this is Mario's um, restaurant. So that we just missed your call, how can I help? Awesome. And then we have, so we'll save this. So what happens with this thing is the number that was given to Mario's Italian restaurant, if someone calls that number and they don't pick up, then it's going to automatically text back that customer saying, hey, sorry, Mr. Call, how can I respond back to you? 
the nice part about that is you've now at least connected that line of communication rather than him calling and then, or him or her calling and then not picking up the phone. You're not picking up the phone and him being like, well, I guess I'm going to go to the next Google search and which they could still do anyways, but at least you have some form of communication. You've reached out to him and that information also will be connected within the conversation tab um, of your system. So you're able to communicate with these customers uh, via the conversations tab. And the nice part about it too is all of your, you can integrate all of your platforms. So email, text, Facebook Messenger, Facebook page, Instagram, Instagram messaging. And then it, they just added TikTok as well. So it's really awesome. Um, next, I talked about the calendar booking. I'm going to speed through these because I don't want to be too long. I'm going to keep this to probably like 16 minutes. But the social planner. The nice part about the social planner is it allows you with the capability to, and I'll show you what my social planner looks like because they don't really post. And you can add Facebook, Instagram, Google My Business, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And they're about to add TikTok very, very soon. So we go to the bottom and you kind of see just the different types of links or, and these are all scheduled out from, you can schedule an hour for a month. And I recommend every business owner taking an hour or two out of their day to just schedule all of their content out. And it really just takes some heavy planning. You got to think about, you know, what, how you're going to, you know, how you plan to run your campaign. And that's also very important is understanding who you're marketing to and what your campaign is. Um, so just real quick to cover everything. We talked about autoresponder for a contact form, missed call text back, calendar booking so that you have an autoresponder for your contact for when someone books your call, books a call on your calendar, excuse me. There's that reminder system so that you can set those things up. A social media, content scheduler so you can schedule out all of your content in advance pictures images video gifts stuff like that messaging campaigns like a newsletter when someone when you go to a bni event or a network meeting and someone's like i thought your presentation was really cool like can i get some more information you're like yeah let me grab your, your information put them in your crm add them to the newsletter uh, contact form I mean, newsletter uh, campaign, and it gets them to be educated about your business. And I mean, it's very essential because a lot of people are like, well, I have a struggle um, selling my products and, and, and everything because people, you know, a lot of times um, are cheap, wherever the case is. But a lot of times they either don't see the value or they're not necessarily sure how your product is going to be useful to them. And a lot of times you got to tell them why they need it. Plumbers, if you got a newsletter that you educated them on, hey, this is what you should do if your if your sink starts leaking, or this is what you should do if um, you know your toilet overflows. Little things that like lets them remember that Osborne Plumbing told me that if this happens, this is what I should do. They're more than likely to call on you will call on me because I helped them and I gave them that little tidbit of information than calling someone else who didn't provide them with that education. So making sure that you have some form of a newsletter that is providing education for your clients are going to be very important. Anyways, guys, make sure you once again, like, comment, and subscribe to Technology at Work. It'd be very helpful. I, I would love to get to 100 followers, excuse me, subscribers, people that I could potentially help um, scale their own businesses, agencies, and so on and so forth. You know, that's my main job as a, as a consultant and online business coach is I want to help business owners and entrepreneurs become the CEOs of their own business. Anyways, this is Colin Osborne with Technology at Work. And I thank you for watching this video. Talk soon.